The Lindisfarne Gospels are probably up there with the Book of Kells as just about the most famous Irish insular gospel that we tend to see. The colophon or inscription at the end of the book dates it to around 698. It also tells us that Edfrith, Bishop of the Church of Lindisfarne from 698 to 721, wrote this book for God and St. Cuthbert. Cuthbert being a name that really needs to come back in popularity. Fantastic name. What we're seeing here is a carpet page, which would have been paired with a portrait of the evangelist of St. Matthew. We'll get to that. And we see one of these before the start of each gospel, just like in Doro, but in this case, far more detailed. All of the work is interlaced, and we're seeing it confined within these borders that tend to enhance the idea of movement. In terms of the knotwork, what is it getting at? Well, it could mean a few things. These ideas of life intertwined. The Irish had in pagan Ireland these ideas of life all existing in such a way that if any one element was missing, all of it collapses, the entire system collapses. It could refer to the Trinity. Oftentimes we see threes, which again is coming from pagan Ireland, but also from Christianity. We see a harmony of life in the world that all things are necessarily interconnected. If you kill all the birds, then there's nothing to eat the worms and the insects and they will take off, there will be no food left for the animals that eat the birds. But also we get a sense of dualism. We see twos and threes. We talked about the threes, the trinity. But dualism in the Irish pagan tradition, this life and the afterlife are two sides of the same coin. It's the idea that they would weep at a birth and celebrate a death because a death means someone's being born into the other world and a birth means that someone died in the other world. So this all comes together. These symbols, these ideas all come together in these pages. It would also, again, allow for almost ocular meditation, the ability to simply follow these lines and be so concentrated on that that your thoughts clear and you can figure out an answer to a difficult problem while being in the existing or existing in the general area of the gospels something that is going to help you hopefully guide you in your belief saint matthew in this case may well be based on mediterranean classical modeling how because it's created in 698 after those initial Irish monks had traveled all the way to Rome and returned. And so they're bringing back some of that classical tradition. The figure behind the curtain is uncertain, but is a classical juxtaposition of the closed and open New Testament. So that may be the figure behind the curtain may be an Old Testament prophet with the closed book referring to the fact that the Old Testament is finished with the birth of Jesus. And then we have Matthew writing the New Testament, the angel above him with the trumpet being a representation of the word of God being transmitted through Matthew, through his pen and onto the page. And it depicts the image in terms of line. It is very, very linear and in terms of color, but there's no interest in modeling or perspective. This is just a different concept of art. If we compare it to the Rabula Gospels, what you see is the linear modeling is there, similar to what you see in the Byzantine, but it is made simpler. And really to them, it's not about creating something that is realistic. It's about creating a symbol of that thing so that the proper prayers can be made through St. Matthew that would go to God himself. So the whole thing makes sense. Also, I'm going to point out this is the second Matthew that I've shown you of four. So the sort of thing that tends to happen or tends to turn up on an exam, some kind of comparison or discussion of the four Matthews that we will look at.